When is the vaccine going to come to India? Why are farmers bringing down geo mobile towers in Punjab? What is this tussle between the Sena and the BJP? Well, all of that will be covered over the next two hours. You're watching Good Morning India. I'm Sonal Mehrotra Kapoor. First up, the headlines. Good news on the vaccine soon, says Adar Punawala. As all data has been given to UK and India regulators, majority of the Serum Institute's first doses will go to India. He says this on a day the trial for vaccination begins in the country. Right to live on her own terms? With those words, the Allahabad High Court has reunited a UP interfaith couple directing police to provide security for the couple till they return home. 1,500 mobile towers damaged in Punjab amidst farmers' anger against Jio. Captain Amrinder Singh, the Chief Minister, issues a strict warning and has asked the police to take action against those found guilty. From Bihar to Tamil Nadu, allied trouble for the BJP. Nitish's party says new hate laws are divisive. AI ATMK announces EPS as CM candidate says don't need the National Party as ally if it will dictate terms. Political controversy over summons to Sena MP Sanjay Raut's wife. Sanjay Raut says he has 121 BJP names to give to the Enforcement Directorate. Last Tuesday of 2020 is here and let's begin that with a piece of good news now. There will be good news on the vaccine front soon. That's what Adar Poonawala had to say, the CEO of Serum Institute, which has mass producing capacity of the Oxford vaccine. Now, Adar Poonawala said the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine is likely to get a go ahead in the United Kingdom by the end of December or by early January. Then we may get an approval in India as well, he said adding that the majority of the first doses will come to India. And there are no concerns at all. In fact, you'll be hearing some good news from the UK very soon. You've heard that from the CEO of AstraZeneca. It's a 90 to 95% effective vaccine. If we just keep a two to three month gap between dose one and dose two, they will make that very public. In the meanwhile, the emergency use licensure should come by the end of December or early January in the UK. And, you know, simultaneously then uh, we hope to get that in India as well. India is part of COVAX. And what we have always said is that we'll keep giving 50% of everything we make to India and to COVAX at the same time. Initially for the first month, we may um, uh, give most of the volumes to India. All right, and all this is happening at a time when today is day two of the dry run for COVID vaccination drive, expected to cover about 30 crore people in the first phase that began on Monday. In four states, it's Assam, Andhra Pradesh, Gujarat and Punjab. Here's a wrap-up on what happened on day one of that dry run. This urban primary health centre in Vijayawada is one of the five centres in Andhra Pradesh chosen for a two-day dry run for the corona vaccine program expected to begin in January. 25 pre-identified beneficiaries, in this case healthcare workers, queue up with government notified identity cards to register. After that to the vaccination room, where a trained vaccinator explains that it is a two-dose vaccine given four weeks apart. <laughs> The protocol to be followed to maintain cold chain for the vaccine vials during storage and transport is also being checked, though India has experience with both trained staff and logistics. The injection shot here, only a simulation and not a COVID vaccine jab. Then a half hour wait in the observation room where the patient is monitored for any adverse event following immunization. The dry run over two days in Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Gujarat and Punjab is expected to generate useful feedback about possible gaps and bottlenecks. 
कैसे पोर्टल में उसकी एंट्री करनी है फिर कैसे पोर्टल के बाद उसको बुलाना है फिर टाइम देना है ये सारी चीजें उसमें निर्धारित की जाएंगी हाँ उसमें के भी जो हमारे डेढ़ लाख के करीब जो सेहत कर्मचारी हैं जो डाटा हमारा सरकारी थे प्राइवेट संस्थाओं हमारे पास पहले ऑलरेडी है सबसे पहले उनको पोर्टल में अपलोड किया जाएगा The observations on the working of the Coven software application, human resource, and also logistic network will be reported to the centre so that correctives can be made before the government embarks on the massive program of vaccinating as many as 30 crore people in the first phase. With Ratnadeep in Guwahati, in Hyderabad, with camera person Nagraju, Uma Sudhir, NDTV. Moving on, let's bring you some news from Punjab now, where more than 1,500 of uh, Reliance Geo's 9,000 telecom towers in Punjab have been put out of action, allegedly by farmers protesting against the farm laws, disrupting services in parts of the state. Now, a representative of the telecom company told NDTV the towers have taken a hit due to the physical damage and power disruption or even theft of a generator. Now, Chief Minister Captain Amrinder Singh of Punjab issued a stern warning against the vandalisation of these mobile towers and disruption of telecom services in the state. Remember, the farmers who are protesting right on the outskirts and blocking several highways and connection routes inside Delhi have said very clearly that this is a protest that they are holding against the Abanis and Andanis as they believe the corporatisation of. Uh, the farm sector is what is their primary objection to the new farm bills now ghazali joins us for more on this good morning ghazali take us through what exactly is the extent of damage that we are looking at here yeah so in punjab since this farm uh, the protest against farm laws have started we have heard from many farmers from farm union leaders and this is their apprehension that once laws are implemented a uh, corporatization of agriculture will happen private players will come and at the end what they fear is that their lands will be taken away and this is exactly why uh, though the union leaders have campaigned and appealed people to boycott the products of uh, big corporate houses like ambani and adani and also told them to port their mobile sim connections from jio to another mobile network but certainly in the rural areas of punjab and many parts of haryana as well what we have seen is that farmers or the protesters are gharawing the mobile tower they are damaging it they are uh, climbing a top mobile towers and putting uh, farm union flags even putting their own safety in danger by climbing on top towers and in the last uh, uh, one or two weeks what we have seen is that more than 1500 towers have faced uh, power disruption and 25 out of 9000 total mobile towers in punjab uh, uh, sorry uh, 9000 geo towers 25 of them have faced physical damage so the chief minister yesterday issued a stern warning and that is also surprising that why a chief minister has to issue a warning or ask police to take action because till now uh, there has been no fir uh, registered across the state in any of these cases even yesterday surprisingly in one of the case what we saw the video which has also gone viral that in moga uh, some protesters took away the generator which is attached with the mobile tower later it was recovered by the police and reinstalled there the police even apprehended four suspects but uh, released them later without even registering an fir so now uh, the police of the state government which earlier stood with the farmers during the farm agitation is in a typical cash twenty two situation uh, they can't upset the investors or the big corporate players so chief minister has to say that we will take a strict action so the other side is also asking uh, the chief minister that which side you are on Uh, you support farm agitation but the chief minister says that we can't support vandalism or, or any sort of damage to public and private property all right there thanks uh, ghazali for joining us with the latest on that uh, so as a fallout of this vandalism that is taking place in punjab uh, the chief minister there the congress ruled punjab there captain amrinder singh also in a spot on which side is he on and talking about those protests it is day 34 of the farmers being out in the cold not relenting against their demands of complete roll back of these three laws which they call our kala kanun or black laws and the government has invited the protesters for talks which are scheduled to happen tomorrow finally remember there was a deadlock in talks for the longest time after the farmers had met amit shah and now it's decided 
that on 30th of December, that's tomorrow at 2 p.m., is when this dialogue will take place. The Agriculture Secretary had written to the Farm Union saying the government is committed to finding a logical solution. And uh, the farmers have asked first time on the 29th, but the government has pushed it to the 30th of uh, December at 2 p.m. That the story we'll continue to track right here on NDTV. Meanwhile, let's just shift our focus to what's happening in West Bengal. Now, the Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee is in Bolpur, home to the prestigious Vishwabharati University. She will hold a roadshow there today. And just a week after Amit Shah held a roadshow at the same location. But the buzz was that the economist Amartya Sen of Vishwa Bharati University had reportedly labelled him an encroacher on the campus land. The Bengal chief minister had offered full support to him and hinted at a right-wing ploy to attack Bengal's icons. Mamta Banerjee at Bolpur, home to the famed Central University Vishwa Bharati. She will hold a Padyatra here on Tuesday. As part of the Trinamool's turf war with the BJP that is playing out on multiple fronts in the town 150 kilometers from Kolkata. The latest controversy over this home of Nobel economist Amartya Sen within the Vishwa Bharati University campus. Reports say the Central University's administration wrote to the Ministry of Education listing Professor Sen's name among encroachers on campus land. In this exchange of letters between Mamta and Professor Sen, the Bengal Chief Minister offered full support to him and attacked people she called nouveau invaders for maligning the Nobel laureate. Professor Sen has thanked her for her unstinted support. I mean, like Amartya Sen is not here from that criticism. Amartya Sen is not only here, there are so many other educated persons also. There have, there have not, there have not been no, any letter from them. We have had no communication. Our last communication is a long time ago. And uh, so we just don't know uh, what makes them think that, what makes them decide it and, and make public announcement without one word with me. And uh, so, uh, it's something totally mysterious. At this government meeting in Bolpur, the Vishwa Bharati Mamta Banerjee face off escalating on other fronts too. After she attacked the Vice Chancellor for failing to invite her to the centenary celebrations on 24th of December that the Prime Minister had addressed. At the administrative meeting, the Bengal Chief Minister announced that she was taking back this road from the Vishwa Bharati administration just three years after handing it over to them. Now this road here, as you can see on the map, connects one very important part of the university all the way here to another important part. It's still three kilometers away. Mamta says locals had complained the university administration did not let people drive on the road or even walk during VIP visits. Mamta's show of strength on Tuesday will see her march four kilometers down the main street at Bolpur town. Just a week after the BJP's roadshow here, led by Home Minister Amit Shah. When Home Minister Amit Shah was here about a week ago, he did a two-kilometer long roadshow in Bolpur, which is essentially a small town. Mamta Banerjee's initial plan was to match Mr. Shah on his roadshow route, but now it seems there's a change to incorporate the statue of Ravindna Tagore. Her roadshow is ending here, or her padyatra, and she will also give a small speech here. Now, this again, this entire move seems to be symbolic of the battle, the political battle between the BJP and the Trinamool Congress for Bengal's icons. In fact, the BJP TMC tug of war over Bengal's iconic figures is all set to engulf Netaji and Swami Vivekanand too. With Monidipa Banerjee and camera person GD Shankar, this is Alok Pandey, NDTV. All right, away from West Bengal, from Bihar to Tamil Nadu, there seems to be ally trouble for the BJP. In Bihar, the JDU has spoken against the hate laws, calling them divisive. And in Tamil Nadu, the AIADMK said that it doesn't need a national party as an ally if it's going to dictate terms. Here's a wrap on that. The year 2020 could be ending with ally trouble for Narendra Modi. JDU in the East 
and AIADMK in the south. In Bihar, as Nitish handed over party presidency to trusted aide RCP Singh, the party pondered over many issues. Criticizing the BJP's Love Jihad law was one of them. Love Jihad ko lekar ke jo bhinnatmak, nindatmak aur vibhajan ka hai, jo atmosphere tayar kiya ja raha hai, janta dek ki usko achcha nahi maanta. It is believed that the party is responding to the BJP taking away six JDU legislators in Arunachal Pradesh, a move that has not gone down well with Nitish's party, which saw a shrunk voter base in the recently concluded Bihar elections. The JDU's Sunday meeting, an attempt to remind the BJP of the Atal doctrine when it comes to dealing with allies. Arunachal Pradesh ka jo ghatna karam hua hai, जिसमें से पार्टी के छह विधानसभा सदस्य को भारतीय जनता पार्टी ज्वाइन कराई गई है उस पर पार्टी ने गहरा छोप व्यक्त किया द बीजेपी इज प्लेइंग डाउन द रिफ्ट सेंट्रल मिनिस्टर फ्रॉम अरुणाचल किरण रिजिजू सेड दैट दी अलायंस वॉज फाइन एंड दिस वॉज अ लोकल अरुणाचल इशू लीडर्स इन बिहार टू प्ले डाउन द इशू दूसरे राज्य का मामला हम लोग को पूरी जानकारी नहीं है हम लोग को इस पर टिका टिप्पणी नहीं करना चाहेंगे लेकिन बिहार के अंदर भाजपा जदयू का जो गठबंधन है वह टूट है और पूरे पांच साल नीतीश जी के नेतृत्व में सरकार काम करेगी डाउन साउथ इन तमिलनाडु विच इज अबाउट टू सी इट्स फर्स्ट इलेक्ट्रल कॉन्टेस्ट माइनस जयललिता एंड करुणानिधि दी ए आई ए डी एम के चोज टू रिमाइंड द बीजेपी हु द बिग ब्रदर इन द स्टेट इज सेटिंग द रिकॉर्ड स्ट्रेट अहेड ऑफ द असेंबली पोल्स ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी they will not share political space with the bjp the aia dmk under eps has been seen as sympathetic towards the central government the party supported the center in passing many crucial bills in parliament a natural assumption was that an alliance was on the cards first shiv sena then shiromani akali dal and later the ljp the moving away of allies has not impacted the bjp's fortunes either in states or at the center but the ever increasing list of upset allies is surely bad political optics an ndtv bureau report and uh, with that it's time to take the first break here on good morning india on the other side uh, we'll bring you news from bengaluru and if you made uh, plans to go out on new year's eve you might have to change that that's coming up next Welcome back. Now it was former Minister Arun Jaitley's birth anniversary on Monday, and the Prime Minister tweeted in congratulating him. But that was not it. His warm personality, intellect, legal acumen—all of them was talked about on Twitter. While on the ground, Home Minister Amit Shah unveiled a statue of him at the Delhi Cricket Association. But that was not without a controversy. Here's what happened. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye, bye. First, the Feroz Shah Kotla Stadium was renamed after Arun Jaitley, and now a statue of the late BJP leader at the entrance. In the presence of the biggest names in cricket and in government, Amit Shah and BCCI Chief Saurav Ganguly. Amit Shah, who unveiled the statue, said recognizing those who promote cricket is as important as those who play it. A reference to Arun Jaitley's passion for the game, and also of Mr. Jaitley's tenure as head of Delhi's cricket board, which manages the stadium. अरुण जी आयु में मुझसे बड़े थे मगर मेरे जीवन में जब संकट आया तब बहुत सारे लोगों ने मुझे मदद की मैं ना नहीं बोल सकता इतना गहरा संकट था मगर अरुण जी ने हर क्षण एक बड़े भाई की भूमिका निभाकर उंगली पकड़कर ये पूरे संकट से मुझे बाहर निकालने में बहुत बड़ा योगदान पर इन अनस्पोकन टेंशन मॉड दी एटमोस्फियर बीशन बेदी फॉर्मर इंडिया कैप्टन एंड लेजेंडरी बोलर after whom this massive spectator stand is named has been outspoken in his criticism of the ddca he wants no association with the honoring of arun jaitley under whose leadership the ddca was accused of rampant corruption and nepotism in player selection he has threatened legal action if his name is not taken off this stand with sushil rathi meher pandey for ndtv i know
And prohibitory orders have been issued and imposed in Bengaluru from 6 p.m. to the 31st of December till the 1st of January. That's what the police commissioner announced. In view of COVID, there will be no men's zone uh, sort of called out in clubs, restaurants, hotels. Uh, they can operate, but no special shows, performances, musical nights or any of uh, such celebrations will be allowed. <laughs> Idi Bangalore Nagar Vapti Ali Section 144 Jari Dali Ratade Andre Aid Mata Aitkinta Jasti Jana Yeli Serangala Yeli Auro Wotagi Momentally Moment Marangala Adu Bitre Bere Yatradu Chetpati Agli Yatra Gatavidige Now Yatra Kadivana Hatala Kelu conditions Haki Divi Namdo Vishesh Shetra Ali Jasti publicly Jasti movement Agatade Andre Nam MG Road, Brigade Road, Church Street, E Shetra, Idu on the Triangular Shetra Ide, Amele Kormangla, Indra Nagar. Illi Kelu areas gain now, Bara strict Agi, Ali complete no man's Jontra Martivi. A Shetra Dali, Yarge Ali, Ali a hotel, restaurant, pub, bar, Hogbek Andre. Our Ratra advanced coupon Ribago, our gay Matra Ali Ashetra Volge, Hoglike of Kasha Ratade, Bere Yarge Akade Hoglike of Kasha Erosula. All right, with that, we're going to slip into a break. Back with all the headlines on top of 830. Don't go anywhere. Let's begin with the story of hope now. Allahabad High Court has ruled in the favour of an interfaith couple underlining that the woman is an adult who wants to live with her husband, had the right to live and at her own terms and is free to move as per her choice without any restriction or hindrance being created by a third party. The court also squashed an FIR registered against her husband in September in Uttar Pradesh's Ita district and directed the police to provide security for the couple till they returned home. The FIR was filed after the woman's father alleged his daughter had been kidnapped and forced into marriage. The court also said that she had a choice to live her life on her own terms and is free to move as per her choice without any restriction that express that she wants to live with her husband is free to move as per her own choice without any restriction. The two member bench consisting of Justices Pankaj Nakhvi and Vivek Agarwal spoke to the woman and verified that she married Salman of her own will and confirmed that she had reached uh, the age of majority. हाई कोर्ट ने उसके ध्यान पर भाव से सौंप दिया उसे उसके कार्यक्रम तो क्या शादी आदि कर ली उसने हाँ तो आपको ये शादी स्वीकार है कि नहीं है शादी हमें स्वीकार का हमें नहीं स्वीकार है सर अच्छा क्यों ऐसी क्या वजह है ऐसी वजह है बोल साम मामले नहीं हम ठाकुर हैं अब क्या चाहते हैं आप हम ये चाहते हैं सर वहाँ से आ जाए ल so the family doesn't seem still satisfied with that, but the High Court has made things clear. Moving on from Uttar Pradesh to Madhya Pradesh now, where days after the cabinet there, taking a cue from Yogi Adityanath's government Uttar Pradesh, approved an anti-conversion bill. The chief minister has said that the government will take in the ordinance route to implement a new law as well. This after assembly session was called off on Sunday due to COVID. Um. धर्म स्वातंत्र विधेयक 2020 सहित जितने विधेयक विधानसभा के सत्र के स्थगित होने के कारण सदन में नहीं ला पाए कल कैबिनेट की विशेष बैठक में हम विशेष बैठक कर रहे हैं और अध्यादेश के माध्यम से इनको अब लागू करेंगे कानून तत्काल प्रभाव से कल कैबिनेट के बाद लागू हो जाए and the Nobel laureate uh, and economist Amartya Sen uh, spoke with NDTV and he believes that the so-called love jihad hate law are an insult to India. Take a look. If I may ask uh, for uh, your thoughts on, you know, the so-called love jihad laws that are coming into force in some states in the country, 
apparently uh, cracking down on marriages uh, between people of different religions. Your thoughts on that, uh, Dr. Sen? Well, I think there's a lot to worry about. Uh, the importance of human freedom is one of them. Uh, human rights of people leading a life uh, that they would like, uh, no matter what religion it is, no matter who they are, uh, these are what the Indian and Islamic laws come under the purview and active attention of the Supreme Court. They will be ruled to be illegal, and until then, uh, that is unconstitutional. Until then, people may get away with uh, torturing uh, other human beings by asking them to lead a life that they don't want. You know, it's a big issue. One of the things in in uh, the pronouncement that Akbar made around 1600, when he was setting up a new constitution of the rights of people, was that everyone has a right to convert to any religion they would choose and marry whoever with irrespective of religion what they all want to do. And that's something uh, is a part of the uh, long Indian tradition uh, going back for 500 years. Uh, and we have some reason to be found because when Agua was speaking about human rights in, in Rome, in Campo de Fiori, um, people were being burnt at the stake on grounds of having converted to another religion. So what saddens me is that people should be proud of India and our achievement and our, our importance of human rights, both before the Constitution and very powerfully in the Constitution, often forget that. And that's really an insult to India. So I would say what we are calling uh, the criminal act of love, jihad. First of all, there is no jihad involved in, 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 in marrying someone you love, though it happens to be, you see, in a different religion or to converting a religion, we could, we could decide uh, which religion we would like to choose. This is, it's not for a political party or some political bosses to define and what religion what? we should have. I that is for us to choose. The alternative is inquisition and burning uh, of, of, um, uh, of those uh, who are thought to have uh, fallen uh, from grace. Uh, we don't we don't believe that in India, and those who are trying to impose love jihad as a as a crime to be judged by by the court. I hope the court will nullify that. But until that happens, what they're doing is to denigrate India uh, in a way that my country of which I'm very proud, doesn't deserve in the hands of people who are basically obtuse and ignorant of the importance of human rights and human freedom. Wise words indeed. Moving on for the moment, the Enforcement Directorate has summoned the wife of Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut that has triggered a political controversy in Maharashtra. The Sena leader said that he had a BJP file which had about 121 names. Meanwhile, a banner that says BJP State Office right outside the Enforcement Directorate office put out in Hindi at the branch in Mumbai allegedly by Shiv Sena workers has also drawn in some controversy. Take a look. At the same time, when Shiv Sena workers were putting up a hoarding at ED office in Mumbai, saying it is BGP state office, Sanjay Raut was attacking the ED and the BGP in the Sena Bhavan and said that the ED should have a branch of BJP. <laughs> Uh, 
कि ईडी बेलॉट पेयर ऐसी कार्यालय मध्य टेबल टाक भारतीय जनता पक्षा The enforcement directorate has summoned Shiv Sena MP Sanjay Raut's wife Varsha Raut and asked her to appear before the ED on December 29. 12 years ago when Varsha Raut took a loan of 50 lakh rupees from Praveen Raut a close aide of Sanjay Raut who is accused in the PMC scam and is currently under arrest by the ED. Sanjay Raut says that he has announced this amount everywhere. When he was with the BJP nothing had happened. Now they're trying to pressurize him. Mere paas aise list hai जो ईडी के लिए अगर कुछ काम नहीं होगा तो पांच साल तक मेरे लिस्ट पर ईडी काम करते बैठेगी इतना मेरे पास मसाला मैं भेज रहा हूँ हमारा क्या है हमारा तो पचास लाख का लोन का मामला है ना अरे पचास लाख का ठीक है पचास करोड़ कर लो आप उसमें मैं नहीं डरने वाला वाइल्ड संजय राउत मेड शॉप अटैक्स अगेंस्ट ईडी समन्स द बीजेपी ट्राई टू कॉर्नर शिवसेना इन द केस अदर लीडर्स ऑफ महाविकास अगाड़ी इंडोर्स संजय राउत चांगल काम के नोटिस मिलते नहीं त्याच्यामुळे जर चांगलं काम केलं असेल आणि काही कुठलंही त्यात चूक नसेल कोणी घाबरण्याचं कारण नाही नीट जाऊन त्याला उत्तर देता येतं आता मिळाली कुणाला नाही मिळाली हे मला माहिती नाही कारण मी त्यातला प्रवक्ता नाही महाविकास आघाडी ह्या कुठच्याही गोष्टीला घाबरत नाही आम्ही घट्ट आहोत आणि देशासाठी आणि ह्या महाराष्ट्रासाठी काम करतो एम आर ए परमिशन के बिगर महाराष्ट्र में किसी की भी सीबीआय इन्क्वायरी नाही हो सकती लेकिन ईडी का जो अधिकार आहे उन्हीका अधिकार आहे Shiv Sena is also questioning the summons of ED as earlier a notice had also been sent to several other leaders of the Mahavikas Aghadi on behalf of ED which Shiv Sena is calling politically motivated and accused the BJP of creating pressure Though Sanjay Raut attacked BJP and ED he didn't clearly say whether his wife Varsha Raut will be attending the ED probe on Tuesday or not which will be very interesting to see In Mumbai, with camera person Rajendra Dhalkar, Sohit Mishra, and the TV. Interesting indeed. The time set is for 11 a.m. and we'll be tracking all those details on that story. But moving on now, for the moment, Republic TV editor Arnab Goswami paid lakhs to senior officials of TV ratings company Bark, including former CEO Parth Tapas Gupta. to manipulate the trps at the television rating points that's what the mumbai police had allegedly said in a remand note submitted to the magistrate court on monday the police also alleged that mr das gupta who was arrested last week was the mastermind and fudged viewership numbers and data for financial gain the police made the claim while requesting further custody of the former ceo in order to ascertain if more such payments were made Sohit uh, now joins us uh, live this morning. Uh, Sohit, good morning. Take us through what exactly are the other sensational details that the police has told the court. Well, uh, good morning, Sonal. Uh, yes, this was a remand report that was submitted by the Mumbai Police uh, before a court on Monday, in which the Mumbai Police has said that the Republic TV editor in chief, Anup Goswami, had paid lakhs of rupees to Partho Das Gupta, the former CEO of uh, BARC, that is Broadcast Audience Research Council. and this amount was paid to increase the television rating points the trp of the two republic channels that is republic bharat as well as republic tv uh, so as per the remand note of the mumbai police when das gupta was the ceo of brc anna goswami and other accused in the case had uh, uh, conspired to illegally increase the trps of republic bharat hindi news channel and republic tv english news channel and in order to do that uh, the remand note says which is very serious is that goswami on several locations paid das gupta lakhs of rupees and it has been established in the investigation uh, also it is saying that uh, the uh, das gupta used the money to purchase jewelry as well as other valuables that uh, 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 by the money that was paid by uh, arnav goswami so this is the first time that his name has been mentioned in the uh, remand copy and the remand note by the mumbai police and we can say that this is uh, this might, might create more trouble uh, for arnav goswami the Police sources also say that in the investigation, they have found out that uh, Das Gupta and Arnav Goswami had met at least three times in separate separate hotels in Mumbai. So it would be very important to see that what does Mumbai police does next because now the court has given uh, the custody of Partha Das Gupta till 30th of December. That is till tomorrow. But uh, will Arnav Goswami be once again called for for in- interrogation? This would be an important thing to see. We know that what happened last time when, in the Anwar Naik suicide case, when the uh, police reached that his residence and the entire ruckus that happened after that. So it, this uh, is the first time when Arnab Goswami's name has appeared in the TRP case as well, and it would be very important to see that 
what happens next because as of now nothing is being said by the republic tv or by arnab goswami himself all right so i'll leave it there for the moment we'll come back to you as we hear more on the story taking you through some breaking news now coming in from karnataka where we are told that the council karnataka council deputy speaker has been found dead we are talking about the legislative council deputy speaker sl dharmagoda uh, he was found dead near the railway tracks at around 2 am let's go across to nihal who's bringing us more on the story in nihal the police say at the moment it looks like a suicide a note allegedly also found with him yeah i spoke to one of the senior police officers and uh, she told me that uh, a suicide note has been found and what i have come to know that uh, the deputy speaker was last seen yesterday uh, around late evening near the track he had gone there along with his uh, driver and he was speaking or he was heard speaking over a phone to a couple of persons and he was inquiring about the movement of train on that particular track uh late in the evening he asked his driver to drop him there near the track and asked him to wait and the driver waited for a couple of hours and when he was not found then he alerted uh, other people uh, those who are his close associates so all of them arrived over there and uh, what we have come to know that from 10 pm onwards the search was started by, uh, by police as well as uh, his associates and his dead body was found Uh, around 2 am this is what we have come to know and it is also clear clear now that a suicide note has been found because the ra- railway police is now investigating the matter because it has happened within their jurisdiction hmm. and the railway police but, but nihal what that, does the suicide note say see the police have not uh, officially said anything about the suicide note that what he has written but it seems that he was quite upset over the development recently uh, in the uh, in the council uh, a special session of uh, the karnataka legislative council was summoned to uh, uh, summon and there some a scuffle had happened as we had seen we had reported also from here and it seems that he was quite upset with that he what he has said even yesterday when he was seen with one of the top uh, and senior most uh, bjp leader cc ravi uh, while inaugurating a gym, a gym it seems that he had also told a few leaders there uh, some of his friends also there yesterday that he was quite upset over the development the way he was the way the scuffle had taken place the way legislature had uh, behaved with him so he was quite upset and uh, uh, for the last a uh, few days whomever he met he discussed about it and he, all the time uh, he said that he was quite upset so it seems that mm. this was the reason but officially police have not told us and a brief media about what is written in the suicide note because now it is a uh, 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 you know uh, the, the lo- between the local police and the juris- jurisdictional uh, uh, railway police so th- this right. is also going on between them so soon we will come to know that what what is there in the suicide note but only a sp- speculations are there now right nehal you are saying he even inaugurated a gym pictures of which we are seeing on our screen right now just the day before so it seems like a sudden step uh, at the moment what is the family alleging what do they have to say no the family members have not reacted so far but one thing is clear what i told you that uh, yesterday evening he had gone to uh, gone near the railway track he mm. asked his driver to uh, stop there and while reaching the track he was hard speaking to a couple of persons and uh, he was uh, inquiring about the movements of uh, trains on that particular track hmm. so one thing is clear that uh, he had uh, planned it and only after that uh, what all uh, the news we are hearing now uh, at this stage but uh, police have to uh, once the police brief the media only then we will get to know more but what sure. I, I have come to know that uh, uh the train ran over his body and his uh, head was slit and uh and he was thrown apart from the main right. body so all right now we have to leave it there for the moment we wait to see what uh, are indeed the yeah. contents of that suicide note as well thanks so much for joining us with the very latest sad news there coming in and a shocking development over there the 
deputy uh, of the council uh, there has uh, committed death by suicide at the moment. We don't exactly know the reasons why, but we'll get to that in just a moment. For the moment, a quick break. Back with uh, all the sports news on the other side. <laughs> 